Hi, I'm Tiffany, and welcome to Towering TBR. If you're new here, I'm chronically ill and disabled. I recently read Britney Spears' memoir. I will link the video in the cards and in the description if you haven't already seen it. But in that, I said that I was really interested in her memoir because I was curious to learn more about her mental health and um, the conservatorship that she was put under. I have decided I am going to recommend my top five favorite memoirs that feature mental health. Because this subject matter can be quite triggering, please look up trigger warnings if you need to just take care of yourself. At number five, I'm recommending Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. I'm slightly bending this. This isn't a memoir. This is a biography, but it's too good not to include. This book focuses on the Galvin family. They had 12 children, and six of their boys were diagnosed with schizophrenia, and two others were diagnosed with other mental illnesses. This author tells the story of this family and of their historic contributions um, submitting their DNA so that people could study schizophrenia and find genetic links. Through their DNA, they were able to pr prove that there is a genetic link in schizophrenia, and this is furthered the research quite a lot. This is narrative nonfiction at its finest. It is gripping and you won't want to put it down. It is a difficult read, but well worth it. At number four, I am recommending Strong Female Character by Fern Brady. This is a memoir of a Scottish comedian who was diagnosed as autistic late in life. Let me be clear, I am not calling autism a mental illness. She also suffers from depression, anxiety, and OCD. Due to her autism, she had a lot of meltdowns as a child and a lot of violent outbursts. And when she turned that violence on herself through self-harm, her parents had her attend a psychiatric unit. Her memoir is darkly funny, often finding humor in some of her darkest moments. She's had an incredibly interesting life so far, and she narrates her audiobook with her lovely Scottish accent. So I would definitely recommend, if you like audiobooks, to pick that up. At number three, I'm recommending Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Jenny Lawson has a blog called The Blog S. She also owns a bookstore in Texas and she is known for writing her funny memoirs. She has three put out right now, but I am recommending the second one because it is my favorite, Furiously Happy. She has a fascinating life and struggles with depression, anxiety, as well as other like physical chronic illnesses. Her premise in this book is that because she has extreme lows with her depression, that that means she should be capable of extreme highs of joy and um, happiness. I'm going to share a quote that I think kind of sums it up and uh, give you a taste of the writing style. Some people might think that this furiously happy movement is just an excuse to be stupid and irresponsible and invite a herd of kangaroos over to your house without telling your husband first because you suspect he'd say no since he's never particularly liked kangaroos. And that would be ridiculous because no one would invite a herd of kangaroos into their house. Two is the limit. I speak from personal experience. My husband Victor says that none is the new limit. I say he should have been clearer about that before I rented all those kangaroos. So she is quirky and weird and wonderful. And as a side note, all of her books have a taxidermied animal on top. This is a, a raccoon. And uh, if you like audiobooks, she narrates them herself and they are really great. At number two, I am recommending 10 Steps to Nanette by Hannah Gadsby. Hannah Gadsby is an autistic queer comedian from Australia who also struggles with her mental health. You might be seeing a little bit of a pattern here. I like comedy and humor to help uh, get through difficult topics such as mental health. She became a household name after her Netflix special, uh, Nanette, became quite well received. And she talks about going on tour and meeting celebrities, but secretly she was kind of falling apart. She was having a very difficult time with her mental health at that, mo at that time. She is incredibly candid about her experiences, but writes in a humorous way that doesn't feel too bleak. This was one of my favorite books from 2022. And uh, if you like Australian accents or audiobooks, I would definitely recommend listening to her narrate the audiobook. At number one, I am recommending Darkness Visible by William Styron. This book is not funny at all, but it is incredibly poignant. William Styron is famous 
for writing the book Sophie's Choice, which also has some very dark uh, subject matter. He wrote this back in 1990 and refreshingly had quite a progressive look on depression and suicide. He made it a point to say that people who take their own lives are not weak, but people who have lost their battle with depression. I underlined so many quotes. Uh, this was so profound. It is less than 100 pages, but it really packs a punch. All right, that wraps up my quick video about memoirs that feature mental health. If I have talked about these books before on my channel, I will link them in the cards and in the description below. Tell me, have you read any of these books? And are there any other mental health memoirs you would recommend? Let's have a chat down in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.